Hello Wanderers! Before we get into today's episode we wanted to let you guys know about a few things. First, we have a community Discord server, where you can interact with other lovers of the backrooms, share awesome memes, and more. Next, we finally opened a merch shop. We're very excited to embark on this new step for the podcast, so go on over and give it a look. And lastly, we're always looking for feedback on the podcast, so if there are any suggestions on what you'd like for us to cover, please shoot us a message. P.S. Thanks for all the short stories you guys have been sending. We enjoy reading what you guys send, so please keep it up. We'll be leaving a link to the Discord as well as the merch store in the show descriptions, so with that short message out of the way, let's return to the episode. Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Traveler's Guide to the Backrooms. Where we try to go over and explain the lore of the many levels and entities within. My name is Sharp A3, an MEG AI processing system, and today, we'll be going over some of the strangest interior designers the Backrooms has to offer. So, I hope you have your reality fresheners on hand, because today, we'll be going over the Backrooms remodeling company. Basic Descriptions The Backrooms Remodeling Company is one of the more well-known reality-bending factions within the liminal landscape. Seen as both a militaristic group as well as an interior design company, they're an oddity, even within the Backrooms. Their goal, as far as we are aware, is to remodel and improve the Backrooms. In what way is still unclear, due to the varied results they achieved. Most of their remodeling leads to catastrophic events that lead the levels to become much more dangerous to traverse leaving areas far worse off than before their involvement. While this is normally the case, the creation of sub-levels are also an often result of their remodeling, making their involvement within the backrooms quite noticeable. So, that's a simple rundown of the faction. With that out of the way, let's go over the employees that make up the group. Employees Employees are the name given to the members of the backrooms remodeling company by wanderers through the backrooms. What set this faction apart from the rest of the other major factions is that none of their ranks have a single wanderer in them. Well, as far as we know. Though these employees aren't technically listed or cataloged within the entity section of any public databases, it's very obvious that they're nowhere near human in build. At the very least some of them. The appearance of the employees mainly consists of a humanoid entity with pitch black skin. Now, we use the word humanoid very loosely, This is due to the physiology of many of the employees being very distorted in their builds. Like having six arms, or having 13 legs and eight fingers on both hands. So as you can guess, many of the employees look ungodly in their physical makeup. Their faces are void of all features, except for two large white eyes. Their eyes have been seen becoming exaggerated in size and shape. Leading us to believe that this process is directly tied to their emotions. Much like cartoon characters, As expected of a militaristic group, as well as a standard company, the employees are known to all have matching uniforms. The clothing of which, is created to fit the physical form of their respective wearer. This uniform consists of a bluish-gray, button-up trench cloak with red pauldrons on the shoulders. Their bottoms consist of brown wool pants that can also provide accommodation for extra limbs if needed. They also wear black belts and black leather boots. They wear a white apron over their outfit and to top it off, A dark gray military beret with a metal badge on the front sits on their heads. What makes the metal badge special is that the type of metal it's made from shows the rank of the employee wearing it. The ranks start with copper being the lowest rank, silver about that, and gold being the highest rank we've observed. It's believed that higher ranks exist within the faction that we haven't documented yet. From interactions with task forces found throughout the backrooms, the majority of the employees are quite friendly to wanderers with many of them being formal with those they meet. Referring to wanderers as sir or ma'am respectively. As far as we know, none of the employees have been documented carrying any weapons on them. Which is odd for a faction that is described as militaristic in its make. Luckily, because of their kind nature, it's perfectly fine to interact with them if you need help. So if you come across one, it's okay to talk with them. Let's circle back to their ranking system for a bit. It's noted that their ranking directly correlates with their cognitive functioning, the copper-ranked employees only being able to say very basic phrases such as, sorry for the inconvenience sir, 
to the gold-ranked employees being comparable to the average wanderer. With those in silver rank ranging in between the two. On the rare occasion that one of the employees is injured in some way, they as well as the other members of their task force won't react to the event. With many commenting it's almost like they're in a trance within their work. It's only when an outside force, such as a wanderer bringing attention to the injured employee, do they respond. When this happens, the employees are noted to become hostile to whoever brought up the incident. It's unknown why they do this, but it's best to ignore any injury they may have. Other than those specific instances, they're perfectly fine to talk with. So if you require help and there's an employee nearby, feel free to ask for assistance. Just be sure not to bring up any wounds they may have, or you might find yourself with some as well. Task Force 102X So, out of the other task forces that can be interacted with throughout the backrooms, one stands out the most. Mostly because they're the team you'll most likely run into, and that's Task Force 102X. It's mostly because of this team that the view of the backroom remodeling company is seen in a weird light. Mostly because they somehow manage to do the opposite of what they're meant to accomplish. We'll go more over that concept in a later section. Before we get into this, we should state now that it's unknown if the employees have genders. As we get into this section, we'll be classifying the members based on articles and documents as accurately as possible. So, with any further delay, the first member of this team we'll be going over is its leader Kappen. He is described as the most human-like on the team, in terms of his shape. He is also documented as being the highest ranking of the team, with his silver rank. He's also able to talk the most cohesively out of the others. Normally being the voice of the group when interacting with throughout the backrooms. He's overall in charge of making sure the group is working efficiently and correctly. Though for the most part, this ends in catastrophic failure. Gathering from his interview log, Kappen is the poster boy for the faction. Being formal and polite in his responses. Always being cheerful when talking with others. Next up is Penelope. Though she has a humanoid upper body, her lower body consists of six legs. This has her walking much like an insect. Her role in the group is mainly to run errands and make sure things get done in the group. A task she relentlessly puts on her shoulders. It's not stated what her rank is, but from how she responds in her interview log, it can be speculated she's at least a silver rank employee. Following her up is Grunt. A name given to them by the grunting noises he makes. He is largely built and walks much like a gorilla. With his knuckles on the ground. He is the muscle of the group, serving as the classic all-muscle and no-brains kind of person. It's unsaid what his rank is, but it's most likely copper rank due to his inability to form basic words. And lastly, we have Toaster, which is exactly what its name conveys. Toaster is just that. A toaster that the group brings around with them. From an interview with it, it's gathered that it's just a normal unplugged toaster. It's unknown why the group carries it around, or what role it functions in the team. But what is known is, the group sees Toaster as an official member of their team, so don't go messing around with it. Unless you're willing to take on Grunt. It's also within speculation whether it's actually a living construct or not. Weirder things have happened in the back rooms, so it's entirely possible that Toaster is alive, but only interacts with the members of Task Force 102X. A weird, but realistic possibility. Remodeling Technology Whenever the backroom's remodeling company is brought up, one of the first things to come up in wanderers' minds is one of their most famous tools of the trade. The Reality Freshener, also known as Object 32. We did a short rundown of this object in our Items of Interest episode, but since it was a rather brief description we'll be going into further detail here. The Reality Freshener is a small device that sits on the belts of the employees. As its name may suggest it has the ability to stabilize reality around the operator thereby freshening the reality they'll be working in. This makes their jobs of quote, remodeling the back rooms, unquote easier. Though, you can see how this may aid in the worsening of the area if not used correctly. It also has a side effect where a mango smell comes from the device when in use. Most likely as a byproduct of whatever mechanisms are at play. It's been observed by those who got their hands on this device that when in use, it has the possibility to either confuse, distress, intoxicate, or outright stun entities who get into range. The specific reasons why aren't greatly understood, with the best explanation being, due to most entities within the backrooms not following baseline reality, they're greatly affected by the device. 
but this is still speculation at best, so take this with a grain of salt. It should be stated that some objects, especially those that don't obey the normal laws of reality, can be heavily affected by the reality freshener. Causing said affected objects to become less effective when in use. If this item catches your curiosity, we implore you to go check out its discovery log. It's a fun read if you have the time. Level 0.2 Basic Descriptions so, to give an example of how the Backrooms Remodeling Company operates and influences the Backrooms, we'll be going over a well-known sublevel of their creation, which many refer to as the Remodeled Mess. Level 0.2 is a sublevel between Levels 0 and 1. It was created by the Backrooms Remodeling Company, specifically by Task Force 102X. It has a Survival Difficulty Class of 3, that being unsafe, unsecured, and has a low entity count. It was intended to be a remodeling job for level 0, but as to be expected with our lovable task force, they somehow managed to turn it into a death trap. With that basic description out of the way, let's get into the appearances of level 0.2. Appearances Before going into level 0.2 and interacting with anything, it has an appearance not too different from level 0. The main differences between them being that level 0.2 has a red, almost crimson colored carpet and the walls are painted white. What seems to be working outlets can be seen within the level, and many state that the Wi-Fi here is quite strong. It's even been stated that the level has usable bathrooms. A very nice feature to run into after being in the backrooms for a while. So far, level 0.2 is sounding pretty good, but that's as far as the niceties go. Now let's go over what happens once you actually enter and interact with a level proper. Once entering, the level's infrastructure will begin to break down. Showing just how weird physics and reality can be within the backrooms. When this occurs a multitude of things could happen. The ceiling tiles could fall, giving a wanderer mile to server head trauma. The walls of the level can weirdly collapse into themselves, leading a wanderer to become buried in debris. The floor can collapse into either a supporting layer beneath or into the void. Both cases can lead to serious results. Along with many other odd events that haven't been documented, all of which could easily lead to death. These events usually domino into each other in an orchestra of destruction. After this though, it's revealed that under all of the glamoured walls, carpet and outlets is an unfinished house. Leaving the impression that level 0.2 is a rush job on the part of Task Force 102X. So the main question here is what happened to level 0.2? Why does it seem that it was rushed or very poorly constructed? Well, recover documents from the level that might shine some light on that in a later section of the episode. Scavenge and Supplies As far as scavenge-wise, unless you're looking for home renovation equipment, there isn't any reason to come here for any worthwhile materials. There's nothing here that can't easily be found elsewhere in the backrooms. So doing so would be a waste of time and effort. Entities Though the data on level 0.2 doesn't elaborate on the entities that can be found here, it is stated to have a low entity count. This could be explained with the reasoning that, due to its fairly close proximity to level 0 in terms of how the levels in the backrooms are aligned reality-wise, it would make sense that some of the entities that can be found in level 0 may be found here as well. So hounds, facelings, the basic lot possibly could be found here. That would be the easiest way to explain the survival difficulty class. Though this is mostly speculation on our part, studies into the matter are ongoing so hopefully, we'll have some answers soon. Settlements and Outpost Due to the wacky properties of level 0.2, no outposts or settlements can be maintained within it. Any attempt to do so will most likely lead to a rapid collapse and the loss of life, so trying to do so is not advised. Ins and Outs Luckily there aren't many ways you can find yourself in this death trap of a level. To enter level 0.2, travel within level 0 until you start noticing the hum buzz of the lights dimming and the carpet becomes increasingly drier. If you continue in this direction, renovation equipment will begin to appear along with the chance of a door appearing. Entering this door will lead you into level 0.2 and will start the dominoes effect of destruction within the level. Now. In order to level level 0.2 requires that you survive the self-destruction of the level. If you have managed this, simply going back through the door used to enter the level will bring you back to level 0. Both are a simple way in and out of this strange level. 
Recover Documents When first documenting Level 0.2, a clipboard with official Backrooms remodeling company documents attached to it was found. Three, or more realistically, two and a half documents from Task Force 102X and their mysterious higher-ups help shine a little light on just how dysfunctional the task force can be. The first document is a cover letter for the Backrooms remodeling company, which could be assumed to be standard practice for the faction. The second document starts by stating the sector in which level 0.2 can be accessed, which is cataloged as Sector A880-1. Their objective is stated to be a Class A remodeling job. The task force sent a complete set objective, which we know to be Task Force 102X, and the name of the supervisor, who is named Major Took. Who are they, and what roles do they play other than supervising task forces? It's entirely unknown. Due to the wording of the letter, we will have to censor a phrase within it, but doing so shouldn't change the message this letter is trying to convey. So, the letter goes as followed. You better be reading this, it may be the only chance you four have at saving your jobs. Every time we send you four to lead a job it always ends horribly and the higher-ups are noticing the pattern and taking it out on my sorry backside. Do you all want to keep your jobs? Do good this time. We wouldn't want your leader cap and to get punished for all of your stupidity, now would we? Sincerely, Major Took, your boss. As you could probably gather from this document, Major Took nor the higher-ups in the faction are too fond of Task Force 102X's remodeling abilities. And it seems the Major themselves are being chastised for their actions. So far, our lovable Task Force isn't looking so great. Now for the final document, it's a response from a member of Task Force 102X, who is pretty much assumed to be Cap'n. Before we get into this document we need to state that some parts of the document have sections scribbled out, but are still visible. Because of this, we'll be going over the document to its fullest. It goes as followed. Hi. It's me, I know I'm probably not the person you want to be hearing right now, especially since I'm writing this instead of working but I figured I should let you know that everything is a-okay over here. Nothing is going wrong, well, except for a few, yep. Nothing at all. We're working our hardest to make this as perfect as possible. We're doing our jobs especially hard this time because we really don't want to let you down. Sorry for the number of exclamation marks, I got excited. How are things back at home base? I hope everything is good ever there. I was thinking that maybe you could talk to the higher-ups about giving us a few more chances? We've really been working hard and I can assure you most of those malfunctions were entirely not our fault. I should probably Ending the document abruptly there. It's unknown what caused this abruption, but due to the page being torn past this point, we can only speculate. Closing words So, that was the Backrooms Remodeling Company. What do you guys think is their real goal in remodeling the Backrooms? Or do you think they're truly trying to make the Backrooms better? We would love to hear what you guys think. That's going to be all from us today, so thanks for listening and we hope to see you guys in the next episode. Until next time, have a wonderful day, and be safe out there. I would like to say a very special thank you to our patrons over at Patreon. Starting with the Wanderers at the $1 level, Ridiculous, Izzy Klein, Caleb Hills, Zephyr the Cast Iron Crow, Velmex Zorro, Nathan Gear, Anakin Bumgardner, Sushi Penguini, My Friends Call Me PK, Jeff Nordley, Slim Steven, That One Random Guy, The Good Diamond, Undead, Lee, Malamaman, Brandon Berry, Shelby Girl Gaming, and Mystery BMO. Next up are our senior explorers at the $8 level, Stephen Conger and Manacord. Thank you all for going that extra step to support us and what we do. It's greatly appreciated. If you would also like to get your name shouted out at the end of the episode, get access to Patreon exclusive content and more, go become a patron on our Patreon. Thanks again for listening, and have a wonderful day.